On behalf of the entire Project Home community, I want to welcome you here today for this very joyous celebration. It's so affirming to see so many people from all walks of life, our residents, alumni, staff, neighbors, supporters, advocates, and partners who ventured out on this rainy day to celebrate the groundbreaking of JBJ Soul Homes. Together, we are taking another step forward as a community of hope and empowerment to end chronic street homelessness here in the city of Philadelphia. One of the greatest blessings of our work is that we are afforded the opportunity to collaborate with some of the most passionate and dedicated leaders in our city. I am pleased to introduce to you a great friend to Project Home and our partner in this project, the Senior Director of People for People, Mr. Frank Robinson, who will lead us in a blessing. Frank? Thanks, Joan. Uh, on behalf of Pastor Lusk and all the members and people of Greater Exodus Baptist Church and People for People, it's just fitting for us to start with a blessing. Over 20 years ago, uh, Pastor Lusk uh, prayed over this land and just asking the Lord, what do you want to do with this land? Uh, those, at that time, the lands were abandoned lots, a, a gas station that's been abandoned. And he said, Lord, this is not what your neighborhood is supposed to look like. This is not what it's supposed to be. Uh, and through prayer, uh, over five years ago, we cleared that land, and then not knowing what we wanted to do, knowing that something special was going to happen. Well, we're glad to report that the Lord said today is the day. And we're glad to know that uh, the Lord still answers prayer, and uh, Pastor Lusk and all of us are excited about what's coming, uh, what's coming. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this, the opportunity for blessing, and just that your will is being done. We thank you for community. We thank you for organizations such as People for People and Project Home, uh, that we're not worried about territory. We're not worried about other things, but what, what you have said to be done. You said, Lord, in your word that if, if the least of these, it should be done unto me. And we are thankful, Lord, that we are cared about the least of these. We care about all people, and that we make sure that everyone is home. Lord, we thank you for the work of Mary Scullion. We thank you for Joan and all of our partners who have come alongside us, Lord, that we may do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Project Home has certainly been blessed to have great partners in this project. Through our collaboration with FNDC, as well as with the Spring Garden Community Development Corporation and the Spring Garden Civic Association, this very complex project grew from a vision to a reality. JBJ Soul Homes will be a four-story, 57,000 square foot mixed-use development right here at the junction of Ridge Avenue, Fairmount Avenue, and Broad Street, three major arteries in the city. It's a wonderful collaboration. People for People will operate the ground floor retail space, and Project Home will manage the office space and the 55 apartments, 40 of which will provide critically needed housing for women, men, and children who have experienced homelessness in their lives. I'd like to pay special thanks to some incredible community members, Dolores Dandridge, Penny Giles, Justin Navarro, and Pat Friedland, who collaborated with us to make this project a reality. Our gratitude is also given to our critical partners from Regional Housing Legal Services, Mark Schwartz, Mark Levin, and Kim Dolan. We are also grateful to have benefited from the talents of 
Kitchen and Associate Architects, and we'd like to extend our thanks to Matt Bartner and Mary Johansson for their tremendous dedication to, to designing this incredible building. And to our wonderful construction management firm of McDonald Building, especially to Paul McDonald, Ben Lush, and probably the most important person for the next year, the superintendent on this job, Larry Cusack, who I hope is here. We look forward to standing here a year from now and welcoming the first residents home. So please come back and celebrate that wonderful accomplishment. Finally, we are incredibly blessed to have the most talented, tenacious, and creative staff anywhere. Special thanks to Carolyn Plack, Don Billingsley, Janine Miller, Janet Stearns, Matt McCarter, and Sarah Lapori, who drove this project to today. Way to go. Community is at the foundation of everything we do at Project Home. It's the key to breaking the cycle of homelessness and poverty because strong communities support our most vulnerable citizens. Both Project Home and People for People have an incredible champion in our work, City Council President Daryl Clark. Long before he became City Council President, Daryl forged strong relationships with many, many community groups and Project Home is fortunate to be one of them. The common goal we all share is creating communities that are healthy, strong, and inclusive. Daryl, we cannot thank you enough for all you do for the communities you represent and for your leadership for our entire city. So everyone, please welcome Daryl Clark, President of Philadelphia City Council. Morning. It is a great day. And I would like to, at this time, welcome you to the best council district in the state of Pennsylvania. Hold on, hold on. It's part two to this, the politically correct part second only to the council district that you live in. Right? <laughs> Always a politician. Uh, folks, I, 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 this is a happy day. Um, it's, a, it's a, taken a lot, and, and I, at this time, I'd just like to thank all of the people who have been involved. And Joan, you talked about all of the numerous supporters across the board, the funders, you know, and I look out in the crowd and I see people that I know that not only supported this particular development, but it supported all the efforts in our district. I look at my friends, Harold and Lynn sitting there, and you know, folks, and Ms. Dangers, just people, Craig over here, people that have been contributing mightily to bringing the city of Philadelphia back, and particularly in North Philadelphia. But at this time, I want to talk about two organizations that are uh, led by very special people uh, to talk about uh, Pastor Lust and the wonderful work that he's done at Exodus. It's just awesome. I mean, the comprehensive approach to not only dealing with challenges in the city of Philadelphia, but to travel across the water and deal with AIDS in Africa, all of the other significant things that we need to be engaged in. I want to say that it has truly been a godsend from my perspective to know him and the people that work with him and the wonderful organization that he leads. Um, <laughs> next, I'd like to talk about my, my buddies over here. Uh, Joan and Mary, you know, I can call it Mary because we got it like that. You know, I have to say, I have to say sister. You know, um, you know, this is, you know, but um, you know, they, they, these two, these two guys, they're a very interesting team here. They, 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 they double team you, the good cop, bad cop, and you don't know what day it's good cop, bad cop. They switch up on you. You know what I mean? And then at the end of the day, if you don't go along with, I like to say that Mary's goes up to that little apartment around there on Judson Street. I tease her about that. She got that little special phone in there. It's the hotline to God, right? She said, God, they, they won't go along with me. It's like, you can't win. You can't win. But really, it's really the, the, the support that you all have given, I tell you, is just immeasurable to the city and all of the wonderful things you do. I really thank you, appreciate it on behalf of all of the residents of the 5th District and council. Thank you so much for the great work you've done. And lastly, I'd like to talk about a gentleman um, who could 
like the people to go to Temple. I could have gone anywhere, right? And he, he didn't have to come here and do this wonderful things in the city of Philadelphia. Um, he decided and he met the special people that I talked about earlier and he decided he wanted to be committed to the city of Philadelphia and, and dealing with homelessness and dealing with neighborhoods. And, and, and John, I got to tell you now, I'm going to be straight up with you. Uh, when that sign first went up, it says J, B, and then it had a J, right? Now, this is kind of like to a lot of people the heart of North Philadelphia. So a lot of people called and said, Darren, you all building houses named after James Brown? <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. And, and you can, I mean, you can kind of understand that, right? I'm just saying, James Brown used to go to the Uptown and all that, you know. I said, no, it's the other JB. So I told them about you, and they said, oh, yeah, 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 I know him, I know him. You know. <laughs> so, so, John, I just want to thank you, man. You, you, you could have done this anywhere, and you made a commitment to our city and to our people. I just want to thank you so much. I just want to say today is a wonderful day. Uh, can't wait, what, about a year uh, before we have the ribbon cutting. Uh, can't wait. Um, this is an awesome event. It shows the true value of the city of Philadelphia, having a mixed community, talking about the various things uh, as we relate to us having a comprehensive approach to dealing with the challenges in our city. And I just want to thank all of you, everybody who has contributed. I see Pat, I see, man, I see Alan in the back, all the people, Justino all the people from the neighborhood who have worked with us over the years. And congratulations. God bless you all. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much, Council President Clark, for your invaluable partnership, your friendship, and your great leadership for us and for our city. We, we deeply, deeply appreciate you and all you do. We know that the most, uh, we know that the combination of permanent supportive housing coupled with jobs, education, and health care is the most effective and efficient way to end homelessness in our city. In turn, this improves the entire community. In fact, this project is not just a home for 55 people and families. It is much more than that. It's a social and economic investment in our city, creating jobs, social connections, and creating a solid foundation where people can come in, get a job, strive to learn, and contribute to the social fabric of our community. JBJ Homes, JBJ Soul Homes, is made possible by many public and private partners, many of whom are here today. Public leaders like Councilman Bill Greenlee, who really worked along with Darrell to make this um, possible. <laughs> State Senator Larry Farnese, if he's here, if you could please stand. Vincent Kane, Lisa Thomas, and Lisa Papp of the National Center on Homelessness Among Veterans from Washington, D.C. Daynette Mintz, a tireless leader and partner from the Office of Supportive Housing here at the City of Philadelphia. Dr. Arthur Evans from the Department of Behavioral Health. And Kelvin Jeremiah, whose energy and vision is reshaping the Philadelphia Housing Authority and generous private partners, including David Bukas from the Federal Home Loan Bank, Michael Rubinger from LISC, Frank Peraza from PNC Bank, Michael Carbone and Tim, Tom Shoemaker from TD Bank. I want to offer a very special word of gratitude to two other phenomenal staff members in the Project Home community to Sue Smith and her enormously talented team from the residential department at Project Home who provide the leadership and spearhead at the residential program that will be here at JBJ Soul Homes, and Amy Burns and her great team from development who continue to broaden the base of support for this work 
and who made this wonderful celebration today possible. In short, this residence will symbolize the best of our city. All sectors of our community coming together with a bold vision and effective strategic investment to meet our toughest social problems in ways that makes Philadelphia a more humane, fiscally prudent, and hospitable city for all our citizens. All of us from Project Home are grateful to be part of this. The heart and soul of our work are the Project Home residents who inspire us every single day. Recovery is the powerhouse of Project Home. And we thank God and we thank the Resident Advisory Council who nourishes and develops the spirit of recovery. I want to thank our residents Lee Mann and Lawrence Samuels who advise us during the planning stage. And I'm also honored to introduce Walter Broadnax, a veteran, a Project Home alum and leader who works at the Homepage Cafe and is a Project Home trustee. Please join me in welcoming Walter. Morning. Morning. My name is Walter Broadnax. I'm a veteran of the United States Army. I fell on some tough, difficult times after my discharge. When I came to Philadelphia in 2007, I came with nothing. I didn't have a job or a place to stay. I didn't even have a copy of my birth certificate or my Social Security card. I contacted the VA. It was through the VA I found out about Project Home. I think it's the strength of the collaboration between the VA, the city, private donors, and Project Home that makes such an impact on the lives of people living on the streets of Philadelphia. I spent 22 months living at Project Home St. Elizabeth Recovery Residence, where I completed the amazing and supportive program they have there and began the journey of getting back on my feet. The entire time, both the VA and Project Home worked together to make sure I had support I needed to continue in the position of direction. That's in a positive direction, I'm sorry. Once I left St. Elizabeth, I was healthy and happy with the roof over my head. I was ready to do something. I didn't want to sit around all day, so I talked to Sister Mary. I told her I wanted to work. Sister Mary hooked me up with Project Home, Exline Bettering Training and Employment Program. I was placed in a nine-month internship at the Homepage Cafe located in the Free Library. I loved it. My boss was so pleased with my work that she continued to give me extra shifts and hired me when the internship was over. I was the first class of interns. We are now in our third class, and I have trained other interns who, can, who come through the cafe. I'm proud of my accomplishment, and I'm also proud to help other veterans see what they can accomplish with their little hard work. There is a plaque at St. Elizabeth Recovery Residence thanking John Bon Jovi in honor of his parents who were veterans for his contributions to that residence. I look at it many times in which I had a chance to thank you personally for the support I received when I was there. Today I can say thank you. Thank you to everyone here who helped me and will help so many others with this project. I am five years in recovery, happily employed, and have a home. When I make my first million, I will follow your lead and give back to the community a fraction <laughs> and give back to the community a fraction of the generosity that has been given to me. Thank you to each and every one of you. And thank you very much. Thank you, Walter, for your service, for your leadership, and for your commitment to the mission 
that none of us are home until all of us are home. Join me in welcoming uh, Brian Hudson. Brian Hudson is the Executive Director and the Chief Executive Officer at the, Phil at the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. Since 2003, Brian Hudson has been um, a leader in, providing, in the provision of capital dollars for affordable homes and retail and rental units. And PHFA is one of the largest housing agencies in the United States. Brian Hudson is one of the most respected and admired housing finance directors in the nation. And we are incredibly grateful to him and his colleagues at PHFA, and we are incredibly grateful for his partnership. So please join me in welcoming a great leader in the state of Pennsylvania, Brian Hudson. Good morning. It's a pleasure for me to certainly be here this morning. I also want to recognize uh, PHFA board member Mark Swartz. He's hiding back here in the Phillies hat. I love to embarrass him. Mark, raise your hand so everyone can see you. <laughs> Sister Mary mentioned Mark's work for Regional Housing Legal Services. He's also one of my most passionate board members and one of my partners also. So thank you, Mark, for what you do. Uh, you, you hear a common theme here this morning uh, of a partnership at the federal, state, and local level. Uh, so I also want to give a special thanks to uh, John Bon Jovi and the Middleton family for being partners. And truly, you are a blessing. Thank you for what you do. <laughs> Councilman Clark told me, he said, well, it's always a good day when I see you. So. <laughs> Councilman, I did not bring credits today. <laughs> Uh, but the credits are uh, very competitive. Uh, we're now funding one out of every three applications across the Commonwealth. So my mes message to, uh, in Washington will be, don't mess with the tax credits. <laughs> We've all heard about the fiscal cliff that's coming and everything will be on the table, so we're not taking anything for granted. I'm, I'll be in Washington over the following months and weeks to make sure that credit remains intact. Uh, I, I have the easy part, you know, allocating the credits. Uh, Sister Mary, Project Home, you have the tough part, you know. It's your vision that makes developments like this happen. We have a, a relationship that goes back over 15, 20 years, uh, and I know that when you send an application, and not only is it going to be difficult, but it's going to be serving those most in need. So I said, let's, let's see what we're talking about and let's try to get it done. So I want to thank you and Project Home for what you do. So on behalf of the board and staff of PHFA, uh, I can't wait to come back for the dedication. And I know we have more applications in. Uh, there's such a great need for housing those uh, that are most in need around the common, uh, Commonwealth, D disabled, homeless, uh, the mission is so great, and we need partners uh, such as yourself, such as Project Home, state, federal, local level. We all have to work together. We're going to be asked to do much more with less resources, and this is what it takes. But this is a great model that I'm going to share with my colleagues, not only in across the Commonwealth, but across the nation, so we can get more resources to the table to do what we need to do. So thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you so much, Brian. JBJ Soul Homes is the second project of the Middleton Partnership, an innovative um, initiative funded by a transformational leadership gift from Lee and John Middleton. Remarkable leaders in the community. <laughs> with unprecedented vision. The Middleton Partnership leverages the support of both the public and the private sector to work together to end homelessness. The vital partnership of Lee and John, along with John Bon Jovi and others, is a testament to their belief and conviction that ending homelessness is possible and the time to act is now. 
John and Lee recognize the vital role of the private sector in working to enhance the common good, and they have demonstrated a deep commitment to stand up with those in need. John and Lee, all of us are so grateful to you for your friendship, your passion, your vision, your overwhelming generosity, and your leadership. Lee is an outstanding member of our Board of Trustees, and together, you are truly representative of what is great about our city. Your tenacity, compassion, and commitment makes a lasting impact on the issue of homelessness. You are a blessed hope to us, to those in need, and to our society. And I am proud, humbled, and honored to introduce to you John Middleton. Thank you, Sister Mary. Lee and I have been involved with Project Home for many years now, and our experience has been both remarkable and wonderful. We are inspired by the vision, talent, and commitment of everyone at Project Home, and what they have achieved leads us to the absolute conviction that we can end homelessness in Philadelphia. <laughs> After witnessing what Sister Mary, Joan, and the entire Project Home community has accomplished over the past 23 years. Lee and I knew this was the organization with which we wanted to partner to help those in need. In the last two years, Project Home has developed a comprehensive strategic plan to end homelessness that enables private citizens to leverage their support for Project Home by partnering with city, state, and federal agencies as well as each other. Lee and I are excited by the very real prospect that these private-public partnerships provide the means by which we can end the cycle of hopelessness, excuse me, end the cycle of homelessness and poverty in our great city. John Bon Jovi's Soul Homes is one such partnership, and today we celebrate taking an important step in eliminating homelessness. Successfully completing our mission won't be easy, and Project Home can't do it alone, but this gathering today demonstrates what has always been a central tenet of Project Home's success, building strong partnerships across the community and the impact of that collaboration is certainly visible today. Our grateful thanks to our city, state, and federal partners, and most especially to John Bon Jovi, Craig Spencer, Leo Carlin, and Mimi Box of the JBJ Soul Foundation for their extraordinary vision, leadership, and generosity. <laughs> this day is truly only a possible because of you. You have heard Penelope talk about the hope that this project brings to the, to the community. You have heard Walter talk movingly and, he, and passionately about what it brings to, to the homeless community. I'd like to add one other thought. Your commitment to this project gives confidence to all the Philadelphia region that this is a problem that we can solve. We simply have to be dedicated to that goal. Lee and I are honored and proud to be working with you towards that end. And we look forward to finishing the job because this is a problem that we can and will solve. Thank you so much, John and Lee um, for your incredible commitment. And uh, let's go Phillies. We're looking for a uh, <laughs> season coming up. So um, Project Home have been blessed with compassionate, humble, and incredibly generous philanthropists and partners over many, many years. We got to this point standing on our sisters and brothers' shoulders. So I'd like to acknowledge the Conley Foundation, Lynn and Harold Honickman, Jim and Franny McGuire, Donna and John Basha, Debbie Fretz, the Independence Foundation, Steve Klein, Citizens Bank, PNC, Thomas Jefferson University Hospital, Claire Harrison Harvey and Brandsburg Law Firm, PICO, Canada Drive, the Pew Charitable Trust, the Sisters of Mercy, 
uh, the United Way, the Saul Foundation, and John and Lee Middleton. And most importantly, our entire board of trustees chaired by Kathy Owens. I'd also like to um, recognize our organizational partners, Horizon House, Covenant House, and Pathways to Housing. And now, it's my honor to introduce to you an international rock star and an icon. <laughs> John Bon Jovi is one, is, is one of the most revered artists of our time, not only for the multitude of best-selling records or for his TV and movie debuts, debuts, but because he is beloved around the globe for his genuine concern for the plight of those in need. For those who saw the recent NBC Benefit concert, two weeks ago for the victims of the devastating Hurricane Sandy. You may know that John Bon Jovi was the first musician to sign up. And without hesitation, he said he would fly home from an overseas tour and help. John is a person who sees a need, takes action, and encourages others to do the same. John and his wife, Dorothea, have made hope delicious through their Soul Kitchen in Red Bank, New Jersey, addressing the needs of hunger in their community. John has worked with President Obama in responding to the needs of the youth in our nation. And John has been instrumental in the work of Covenant House, including developing a partnership between Covenant House and Project Home. Please join me in welcoming the founder and chairman of the board of the John Bon Jovi Soul Foundation, our friend, John Bon Jovi. Thank you, thank you. That's far too kind. I don't deserve any of these accolades. But thank you, Sister Mary. As, as we all know, our day is a little brighter when we're in the company of Sister Mary and both and Joan and all the good works that they have uh, done in the past and will continue to do in the future. So I want to thank Sister Mary and Joan. I want to thank Craig Spencer, my partner, and Leo Carlin and Steve Perna. Of course, Mimi Box from the Soul Foundation. As we together celebrate another big step in our fight to end homelessness in Philadelphia. When I hear Walter's story, It humbles me because, as John said, and I'm completely off script, uh, we don't need a scientist to create the cure. There's um, going to take a lot of determination and um, sweat. And there are a lot of determined people up here, out here, who believe that we can, in fact, eradicate homelessness. Um, with great leadership comes the opportunity to make the change you want to be. This was the place where our four founders, our forefathers founded this great nation. I don't think they intended to see people on the street homeless. I think that they intended people to come and pursue life, liberty, that pursuit of happiness, the basic needs of a roof over your head, Opportunity to have food in your belly gives you that opportunity to go out and make the world a better place. I'm really happy to be just a small part of what will be these 55 homes. I hope that what will happen here is that someday somebody in those homes, like Walter said when he makes his first million, will go out and actually just pay it forward. It doesn't take money. It takes acts of kindness. It takes determination, it takes will, it takes, it takes being your own microphone and being your own television camera. But I, I do believe that we live in a time when we can't rely on just government alone, nor can we rely just on the private sector. But these collaborations 
at a time when our nation is so polarized are so important to the future of the country. And it's what's going to make America great again. And it starts small. It's starting right here, right now, under this tent. So I'm going to just leave you with one last paragraph and try to lighten the mood a little. But when Mayor Nutter said he wanted to eradicate homelessness in Philadelphia, in fact, making this the first major city committed to those words, the mayor caught the ear of Sister Mary Scullion. And as you all know, and I got to, to be there right next to her, Sister Mary does not take words like that lightly. <laughs> so she heard the mayor's words, and, and we, yes, you and me, we, will follow Sister Mary, will follow Joan, we will follow the Middletons leading with their money and their example. We will follow the people of Philadelphia down this road because together we can get this job done and eradicate homelessness. Thank you so very much for giving me your time. John, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And thank you for the call to action that you and John and Lee Middleton have given us. Um, it truly is the power of we. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce another champion of those most vulnerable in our society. Jane Vincent is the Regional Administrator of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. Jane and her team play a key role in providing the availability of affordable and supportive housing in our region. They provide the bridge between the federal government and local communities to ensure federal resources reach the people in need. HUD has been instrumental in pretty much every project around our city that has um, provided permanent housing to those who are homeless. So join me in welcoming, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome Jane Dixon. So we were whispering down on the other end. They said, hmm, short straw, eh, Jane? <laughs> but I have a few things to say, so if you'll indulge me just for a couple of minutes. Um, first of all, I really think it's so very fitting and appropriate that we're here today, Veterans Day week, if you will. Uh, thank you so much for your service and for really rallying uh, the troops here, if you will. Uh, it's certainly a privilege to be dedicating these homes, so many of whom we hope will support our veterans. And I know, based on all the work you all have done, they will. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here standing with many of our Philadelphia partners as we create yet another source of affordable housing. Just nine months ago, I was with uh, many in this room when we were at 21st and Venango, opening the homes for James Wy Widener Ray Homes with HUD support. We're happy to support this project as well. Yet another good investment here in Philadelphia. For nearly as long as HUD's targeted McKinney-Vento homelessness assistance programs have been in existence, that's 25 years, HUD and Project Home have worked together to help meet the needs of families and individuals who have become homeless. We've taken many roads on this journey together. With the City of Philadelphia's Office of Supportive Housing, we've helped fund the original Fairmount Gardens and St. John the Evangelist, as well as provided funding for supportive services like job readiness. Through HUD Shelter Plus Care Funds, and together with the city and the Philadelphia Housing Authority, we provided rental assistance for those who are homeless and families with disabilities living at Kate's Place and Rowan Diamond and Judson, individuals and families that are housed and helped by Project Home. Through the Philadelphia Housing Authority, Project Home receives single room occupancy funds at Hope Haven. At 1523 Fairmount, as well as the new 1515 Fairmount that we're celebrating today. 
What is great about JBJ Soul Homes Complex is that it helps achieve many goals. We know that's what home is all about. It creates a more sustainable community. It provides access to retail. It is LEED certified and energy efficient. The 55 units intended for providing homes for those who are currently homeless, and it helps us move that much closer to ending homelessness here in Philadelphia. Under the current administration's Sean Donovan and President Obama's opening doors strategic plan to end homelessness. There are a number of members of HUD's team who really feel passionate. I certainly want to call out Nadab Bynum from Community Planning and Development, and I would be remiss if I didn't notice Brenda LaRoche here, our retired Deputy Regional Administrator, for whom this kind of a project remains just really part of her heart. I'd like to also recognize certainly the Philadelphia Housing Authority, who has been a, a real partner with us. And I be, believe I can speak for everyone that we can say that we're all working together to provide safe, decent, and affordable housing for everyone in Philadelphia. Our mission at HUD is to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities and quality homes for all. That's our stated mission. We take pride in Representative Secretary Donovan's personal commitment to, opening the, open, to implementing opening doors, not to just reduce homelessness, but to end it. We've heard that from a number of our speakers about how we are all committed to ending homelessness and how the city of Philadelphia will be the first city to do it. When we come back next year, we'll be that much closer. Thank you so much, Jane. And um, I now like to introduce Reverend Lusk, who's going to um, introduce our last speaker. Reverend Lusk. Let the church say amen. Aga, this is a tremendous project. We've come a long way, and I'm going to get right out of the way. There's a very distinguished gentleman out there somewhere, Kevin Dow, who I am to present. Uh, and but before I do that, just let me tell you how grateful and thankful I am for all of those of you who work with us and those of you who brought not only energy to this program, but also you brought uh, tremendous resources. Um, I'm sure Frank has already told you our story. Um, that land uh, uh, that we're going to build this project on was basically the money was raised by common folk, people who believed in the community, that Greater Exodus Baptist Church family, and many of those uh, people who gave to my vision for this for this land uh, are people who are on welfare. Many of them on Social Security. Uh, every person counts. And all that we do together brings glory and honor to God. Let's be honest. Everybody wasn't for this project. Let's just be real honest. Some people fought us tooth and nail. But by the grace of God, we stand here victorious. <laughs> Daryl, it's always a pleasure working with you. Uh, what an honor it is uh, to be in the area in which you have been a councilman for so long. And I've enjoyed our, our working together, our praying together, our fighting together. It goes all the way back past uh, your councilmanship. And uh, what a joy it is to stand at this table and, and with you right now and sit, uh, stand on this podium with you. I think I've got uh, probably two more things to say. Mary is queen, and Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Kevin Dow, somewhere in the house. Let's give him a hand as he comes. He's been a dear friend of ours over the years. Kevin, 
Kevin and I, Kevin and I go way back to his banking days. When, when he was actually helping us in, in that respect. But now, of course, uh, you know he's with the city and he's been a real blessing to us. Could you just give him one more strong round of applause? He came when we needed him most. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way now. Penny, what a pleasure it is working with you, amen. All right, let the church say amen. I'm a little nervous now because when you bring religion into it and you bring amen, you bring the Lord into it, you get a different level of excitement. So I'm just glad to be here. Um, I, I think I got the last short straw right about now. Um, so I'm going to make it a short speech to, to reflect that. Uh, so uh, all, all the great things have been said. All the great people have been mentioned to make this project a reality. The city of Philadelphia is just humbled to be involved in it and here today in representing uh, the mayor and, and the Commerce Department and all the various agencies that had input into this. And so what I, I, I'd like to just comment is about the ecosystem. It's about providing jobs. So you got jobs here, you got jobs that just completed that project over there. We got jobs with the housing project that's right down the street. We got jobs. It's the ecosystem that provides social services to those who are most in need. Homes for people who are homeless. If we can solve, as John Bon Jovi said, we can solve that problem, we can move our city and our nation forward. So it's the ecosystem. It's about commercial quarter revitalization. Fairmount Avenue, Ridge Avenue nonetheless, Broad Street is something that we're very, very interested. The ecosystem that has enabled this community to move forward. Um, I see a number of people in the audience, and so without doubt, I gotta say, you know, the councilman, he's council president, so he's done a number of things for the city as a whole, but right here, today, he is council, council district member uh, for this, this neighborhood, and we wanna say thank you very much for your leadership, absolutely. absolutely. For, for, for five years, I lived right up the street. I, I happened to move into the, to the other council districts, you know, but, but I will say that right here, right now, this is the best council district in the city of Florida. <laughs> Next to my own. I'm, I'm now I'm just newly into another one, so I got to get 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 it settled there. Um, but I also want to say that ecosystem that I talked about, it's about the people. So we can't forget that the leaders that make these things happen. It's you know, Councilman Darrell Clark. We have. Um, Pen Penelope Giles, we have Sister Mary Scullin, we have uh, Reverend Lusk and Frank Robertson, we have, um, we, we have folks like the Middleton families who not only doing projects like these but others throughout the city of Philadelphia. We have our government agencies from PHFA, from HUD, all of these folks coming together to form an ecosystem that makes these projects a reality right here in the city of Philadelphia, right here on Fairmount Avenue, on Ridge Avenue, on Broad Street. And so it's a great pleasure that on behalf of the city, on a grateful city and a grateful mayor, that I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful day. So thank you. and. Um Please join me for one more round of applause for Reverend Lust because it really was, if it wasn't for him and the Exodus Baptist Church, this project would not be possible. So we really want to thank Reverend Lusk and all the parishioners from the Exodus Baptist Church. We want to thank God and we want to thank you. And we look forward to seeing you a year from now when the uh, JBJ Cell Homes is a real reality. Thank you.